the Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, hearing God's Word, and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Be welcomed and gathered, my friends. This is the Saturday morning right before the celebration of Pentecost tomorrow. We will gather again this evening in vigil for that celebration. The coming of the Holy Spirit is on our minds and hearts as we come to the close of the Easter season with uh, this liturgy and we celebrate it with joy and thanksgiving. The desire for the Holy Spirit in our hearts is palpable, and one of the gifts that we will be given as we are this day is mercy. Let us seek it out, let us embrace it and celebrate it. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came that we might be one, Christ, have mercy. And you lead us to the joy of the Father's house, Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us our sins and lead us to the life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have celebrated the Paschal festivities may by your gift hold fast to them in the way that we live our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had gathered, he said to them, my brothers, although I had done nothing against our people our, or our ancestral customs, I was handed over to the Romans as a prisoner from Jerusalem. After trying my case, the Romans wanted to release me because they found nothing against me deserving the death penalty. But when the Jews objected, I was obliged to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no ac accusation to make against my own nation. This is the reason, then, I have requested to see you and speak with you for it is on account of the hope of Israel that I wear these chains. He remained for two full years in his lodgings. He received all who came to him, and with complete assurance and without hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His searching glance is on mankind. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord searches the just and the wicked. The lover of violence he hates. He, for the Lord, is just. He loves just deeds. The upright shall see his face. 
the just will gaze on your face, O Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I will send to you the Spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to John. Peter turned and saw the disciple following whom Jesus loved, the one who had also reclined upon his chest during the supper and had said, Master, who is the one who will betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, What if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? You follow me. So the word spread among the brothers that the disciple would not die. But Jesus had not told him that he would not die. Just, what if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? It is this disciple who testifies to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. There are also many other things that Jesus did, but if these were to be described individually, I do not think the whole world would contain the book's that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, we are at the end of two of the books that we have been journeying with during uh, these days of Easter. The first one, the Acts of the Apostles, and then, of course, the Gospel of John. And in the Acts of the Apostles today, we have the final verses of that book. But Paul's apostolic career is not done. He, Luke doesn't seem to know um, that Paul is going to take another journey. He's going to be able to uh, be released from this uh, house prison, house arrest that he's under, and he will undertake a new missionary journey. And from that journey, he will then return to Rome. And during uh, and after his uh, time in Rome, uh, briefly, he will be arrested once again, and this time executed. The uh, reality here for Luke is he's not interested in the finality of Paul's uh, career as preacher and evangelist, but he wants to make sure that we know that Paul has made it to Rome. Because he has, uh, as it were, done everything he can to convince the Hebrew community of the, of that Jesus is the, the promised Messiah. He has been regularly rejected by that, that possibility. He is finding some, some uh, satisfaction, some interest in the Lord Jesus Christ among the Gentile community. And now from Rome, he can do what the Lord Jesus had asked the church to do, the early church to do, and that is to go to the ends of the earth and proclaim the good news and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so he will do that as he embarks on a new journey. Uh, and from Rome, which is the center of civilization at the time, uh, as it were, all roads lead to Rome. Well, that means all roads lead out of Rome to the ends of the earth. And the gospel from Rome can spread uh, throughout the land. And so we have this, uh, uh, this reality of once again in the story, he, he, he comes to the Jewish community. They should understand, but they do not. He invites them to come to his home, which, because he's not uh, able to function properly inside of the, of the synagogue. And we have now his commitment to the mission, his mission to the Gentiles. 
and of course we are the consequences of that. Our faith is born out of this mission. We who are here, uh, our faith is born out of that mission. And, and we need to see, especially in this age of the virus, how, how sacred our homes are. Paul's homes become the sanctuary. And for the first three and a half centuries of the church, the home is where the, the worship occurred. It wasn't until the Constantinian era that we had buildings that we called churches uh, to be able to celebrate in. And so the importance of our home is emphasized here as Paul's home becomes the sanctuary, both for the liturgy and for the proclamation of the gospel. And so we celebrate that with, with joy and thanksgiving. And then in the gospel today, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't fit in some ways. Okay, The uh, scholars debate about this final portion of John's gospel and, and why is it particularly there? It doesn't seem to be a, a normal ending, a normal ending for the text. And it seems to be addressing this problem in the early days of the church, okay? John is still alive after the death of St. Peter, the first pope. So the question among the early church seems to be, is John now? to be the Pope, since he is still a living apostle? Or does the Pope remain as the Bishop of Rome? In this case, his name was Linus. Would he be recognized as the primate, the one who is the, the, the father of the church, that is, the one to whom we, uh, we must re remain obedient and respectful? Or is John an apostle beloved of the Lord, uh, becoming the one. John here testifies that it is not him, but rather the bishop of Rome, by saying to um, by this dialogue that is going on before Jesus' death, before Jesus' death, I mean, before his leaving us, this experience of, uh, of this conversation. And so uh, the church then, um, of course, honoring the apostleship of John, receiving his literature as sacred and ultimately the, the scriptures of the church. But now the, the authority in Rome, the authority of the church, continues that, that line as the early traditions tell us. It's Linus, it's Peter, Linus, Cletus, Clement, and then the rest all the way to Pope Francis today. And so we pray that the power and the goodness of our God would would connect us to this story as we end this Easter season, would connect us to the mission of the church to bring the good news to everyone and to recognize and to assent to the leadership of our Holy Father, Francis, in this great line of faithful leaders to Jesus the Christ in this present age. We lift now our need to the Lord. He hears us as we pray and offer our gratitude to him, our thanksgiving to him, but also our needs to him this day. For our holy church, may the Lord bless her and protect her from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For police officers, corrections officers, and all who work in law enforcement, May God grant them wisdom and prudence in carrying out their duties with justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from chronic or long-term illness and those who live with disability, may God provide them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For young people in our faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life, May they be confident in our love, support, and prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who face economic uncertainty because of the pandemic, may God graciously look upon their needs and bring them relief and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For, the faithful, for the faithful departed, may God grant them a peaceful passage from this life to the next. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we make these our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash me of my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, coming near, we pray, O Lord, prepare our minds for the divine sacrament, since the Spirit himself is the remission of all sins, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Gustavo, our Bishop, with all God's people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear in your compassion our prayers, O Lord, 
that as we have been brought from things of the past to new mysteries, so with former ways left behind, we may be made new in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may the blessing of Almighty God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit come upon us all and remain with us forever and ever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go announce the good news. Veni Sancte Spiritu, 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 Veni Sancte Spiritu. Veni Sancte Spiritu, Veni Sancte Spiritu.